The horn stays, so these will be a relatively simple cutting, filing and drilling exercise. I've got some 3 by 60 millimeter flat steel bar here, which I'll cut into 6 lengths and then drill the holes. Once the holes are drilled, I can fit them onto the individual horn blocks, mark them to size and then file them accordingly. The only challenge for me here is finding the most efficient way of doing these, i.e. the quickest and easiest way. Because of the approach I took when drilling and tapping the holes in the horn blocks, I've got a high level of confidence that the spacing is going to be the same for all of them, even though the horns themselves may be slightly different in size. That will make life a lot easier for me now when I drill the holes through the horn stays. So I've rough cut a number of lengths of the mild steel bar, and here you can see I've got three stacked up in the machine vise. I can now centre drill and drill all the holes through all three of them together. I went with three because if I put any more in they started to get loose in the middle. I've got parallels given support underneath but I do need to remove these when I come to drilling so I just manually move them around to avoid the drill coming through. I then fit each stay to a horn block, mark it and file it accordingly. As with the axle boxes, the stays will be specific to each horn block and I mark them as before with the centre punch. A bit like the horn stays, the spring stays are basically a drilling and filing exercise. I've already drilled out the holes, so each pair of holes is for one spring plate, giving me six in total. To help me file them to shape, I'm going to turn up some buttons on the lathe, which I can then harden so I can use them as a guide around the curved ends. For the buttons I use some half inch bow which I drill out to 5mm and then part off into 5mm sections. My intent was to case harden each of these buttons but I don't think I heated them up enough. I only got them to a good orange colour before quenching them and they certainly didn't harden up. Despite that I still bolt the buttons in pairs around each of the holes and use them as a guide to saw off the excess and then file the stays to shape. Despite my rather amusing failing at case hardening, the buttons have lasted. They were certainly reduced in diameter slightly, hopefully not noticeably, but have managed to get all six parts filed to shape. The spring pins, all 12 of them are quite a simple exercise. After cutting to length and facing off in the lathe, I then continue in the lathe to put the threads on either end. As we can see from my rather rough sketch here, 2BA for 11mm at one end and 316 by 40 TPI for 5mm at the other end. I use a sharpie and then my vernier calipers to mark off the length that needs threading. And then unusually for me, because I don't really like doing so, I cut the thread under power. I have got the speed of the lathe turned right down and when I hit the mark, I double check and then back off again under power and finally clean up a little bit of emery. Although in the previous video I said I was going to spot through the frames for the holes for the spring pins and the bottom of the axle boxes, I decided instead to use the DRO working to the dimensions I use when drilling the holes in the horn stays. When drilling the holes I did use the quill fine feed. I really did not want to break through into the bearing itself. And to tap the holes I go straight in with the plug as the holes are quite shallow and there isn't enough room to get a taper in there. For the spring pins I use some 316 bar so that equates to around about 4.76mm and the two holes I drilled for the spring pins in the horn stay are 5mm diameter. That leaves just under a quarter of a mil clearance. I think that's a bit tight so I open up both of those holes to 5.2mm. As I've got a length of spring in my stock cupboard, I do cut a couple of pieces and fit them. I've no idea what the spring is rated at but I thought it'd be good to see how it looks. 
I'll wrap this video up with a couple of pictures of the chassis as it's coming along. And as always, I'll say thanks for watching.